Welcome to Art or Something Like It. A television series about artists of all genres, backgrounds, and media. From music, performance, writing, and poetry. To photography, sculpture, film, and video. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. You're watching art or something like it. Viewing a feedback galore video art causes giddiness, smiles, and pleasure revolution. Side effects include random acts of kindness, inner wetness, and fuzzy love. If exposed, share immediately. Hello, I'm the love astronaut. Come along with me on an intergalactic mission of love to Missy Galore's studios. I'm a Megalomedia pleasure revolutionary. I specialize in video art, live mixing, performance, music, photography. What else do you want? Your features are so great. This piece that you're seeing right now, it's called Freedom Sea, also known as the Fuzzy Video. And this is a real celebration for me. Um, a few years ago, when they were looking to develop property along the Hudson River, they wanted to put a lot of commercial lighting and billboards and things along there. But you know, as a New York City resident, I'm I need nature. Sometimes I just want a space where it can just be beautiful and expansive and I can rest my mind for a minute. So I did a lot of activism along this issue to keep the West Side of Highway beautiful and green and open to people as a public park. Thankfully, it worked out. So this video was shot in the median of the West Side Highway and along the park that was built there with my fuzzy spirit animal girl posse. Pleasure Revolution is my frontline activity against the mass media proliferation of fear. In fact, I decided that we needed to fight fear with fabulosity. And it, it's, it's a dual-sided thing. When I talk about pleasure revolution, part of it is joie de vivre and celebrating life and just feeling good to be alive. And part of it is really dedicated towards social justice. I started creating festivals and events that bring people together about politics and art so that people can become informed about issues in an inspiring way. This next piece is called Thirst. In conjunction with the Third World Water Forum that was held in Kyoto, Japan, we created an eight-day festival in New York City to call awareness to the issues of fresh water. For this piece, I drank water one drop at a time for eight hours, standing in front of a video installation I did shaped as a pyramid, mimicking the molecular structure of water. This next piece is called ID, Inner Dialogues. And this is my multimedia self-portrait. This piece examines me from the inside out. Shot, directed, edited, mixed by me, all the music by me, the vocals. This is Megalomedia in action. Shake it and bake it with me. Don't bake it, you'll see. 
you know, in, in a society like America that has so little respect for art and culture, it's up to us as artists to find ways to sustain ourselves and to respect ourselves and not buy into this starving artist lie that says that if, if you want to be an artist, you have to suffer to create. And if you want to be an artist, you need to keep your work so pure that, that commercial interests don't paint it. it. It's just, it's actually not feasible. It's not possible. There's a lot of fear from technology kind of closing in on us and certainly all the technology that we have in our entertainment world is the result of the war machine and knowing that is a very uncomfortable and unsettling feeling but by claiming it and utilizing it for goodness and joy and uplifting spirit and seeing the way that it facilitates communication and has really opened up day-to-day -day communication with people all over the world you know transformed my vision of what computers were and it took it from this idea of a big brother monitoring us at every step to each person becomes their own full-fledged production studio and that's a really exciting thing that really opens up the possibilities and empowers individuals and this piece is written as a celebration of that computers are the folk art of the new millennium We used to learn from teachers and preachers. Now it's all about software features. Beyond reality, TV is the reality of we. In our technologic society. Well, my friends, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching Art or Something Like It. Now let's check in with a love astronaut. See what she's got to say. Thanks for that fantastic voyage into the world of Missy Galore. For more information, check out gogalore.com. One Ring Zero, they're an explosion of musical fruit flavor! <laughs>
And once we got the lyrics, we then took them and set them to music. Paul Oster, for example, we, um, I actually just went to a reading. He's, for those of you who don't know Paul Oster, he wrote the screenplay for Smoke and Blue in the Face in his books, New York Trilogy. Book of Illusions, Timbuktu. He, he uh, I just went to a reading of his and ended up handing his assistant one of our earlier CDs. Somehow he liked the idea and wrote us lyrics. Um, interesting lyrics. It's, I think he had been to Cincinnati and had a really miserable time and kind of wrote these lyrics that are it's like a, almost like a drinking song to hating Cincinnati. There ain't no sin in Cincinnati since I've been Daniel Handler, better known as Lemony Snicket to the children and to the adults who buy the books for their children, um, wrote us some really clever lyrics. If I had a leisure suit, one tenth of one percent as cute, a certain parts of aspects of your face. Well, the Frankenstein song uh, with, has lyrics by Margaret Atwood, and we really wanted to buy. Uh, to have, to have the vocals sort of inhabit the classic Frankenstein monster that we all know from the the, uh, the 1930s movie. Our friend Olivier, who is uh, a great singer, also happens to be the owner of Barbess and Barbess Records, has a really wonderful low voice, uh, uh, sort of gravelly, and because he's French, he has a uh, European accent. It was just it was perfect. Couldn't really ask for a better Frankenstein. Got a dead man's heart and a dead man's brain. I look in the mirror and it's pure pain. A lot of the th the videos you've been seeing spliced in with this production here on art or something like it uh, are video clips from this project. I put up an offer that just said anybody interested in making a music video to one of our songs. To my surprise, uh, we got 21 videos made for us. Bless, please, the people in our galleries, lonely as a distant train. Bless now the cancer of the bone. The last light making beautiful The poison's in the sky Thanks for watching Art or Something Like It. We're One Ring Zero, and you can find out more about us at www.oneringzero.com My mother said I was a piece of art. No, she said I was a piece of work. Oh. Anne Marie McDonald, she's my favorite artist. I can't wait to meet her. Hi, my name is Anne Marie McDonald. We're here at the Art Lab in Snug Harbor. We're going to go up and we're going to see my studio and see what I do. I do primarily sculpture and printmaking, although I come from a painting background. I'm originally from Long Island. I'm one of seven children. I am the fourth. If I like a phrase, for example, the sanctity of vegetables, I heard that on the radio. I think I heard it on the radio, or I either read it. But I loved it. And I was doing a, um, I was doing a series called America Cooks at the time. And Sanctity of Vegetables, just the sound of the line, I wanted to do a piece with that line. It's very fragile medium, and it happened to break as I was taking it out of the box today. So this is the Sanctity of Vegetables. And actually, I had exhibited like this. So it was actually exhibited from the back. 
and that can easily be repaired, but it can't be repaired this second. This is the photograph, The Sanctity of Vegetables. Art gave me a way of expressing myself. I've always felt a little bit outside the art world. This one is called All Options on the Table. At that time, I was looking in the newspapers. I was very influenced by what was happening politically in America. Um, and All Options on the Table was something that George Bush had said repeatedly. I think as an artist, you really have to find where you fit in what works for you, how your life will work for you. There was an article about um, the Freegans, and so I did one of the sculptures called The Freegan Chef, and that was dum dumpster diving, where they go in and they get food from the garbage. So I did one of the pieces um, with that image. I am president of a gallery, Soho 20 Chelsea, which is a artist-run women's gallery right in the heart of Chelsea. Five, four, three, two. One. I think that as an artist, the commercial aspect has always been a little bit tricky. And I think that's where artists have to sort of figure out where they fit in and how they're going to make their life work. This is the photograph of Can This Marriage Be Saved? And this sort of makes reference to uh, the magazine articles that always have this section, Can This Marriage Be Saved? And you see the chef, this is the chef here, sort of the heart being ripped out of the cake um, with the knife there. So this is, it's just, it is what it is. The bird named Goldilocks was designed for very young children and I won the grant for that. And what it is, is a tree stump. And in the tree stump is a setup for Goldilocks, the little chairs, and instead there's a bird. The very nice thing about doing public art is that you can share that. And when we go to clean this, this sculpture, or when I go to visit it, and children are around, I do talk to them about it. And they will talk to me about what they think is happening. And one child was said that, well, if Goldilocks is um, a bird, then the bears must be squirrels. This piece is the silent chirps of gun control. And this is the chef that is for that. I was very concerned about gun control. Again, these are things that are happening in life that, are, you know, that I'm reading about, that we're hearing about, uh, guns, and I, I wanted to include that in my America Cook series. This title is um, Extraordinary Rendition. This refers to outsourcing torture. You know, when I was younger, I always had the self-doubt because I like to do a lot of different things. And um, that was something that as I get older, I'm much more comfortable with. I can go to painting abstraction, to being in a show about Salt Mountain, and having to do something that involved salt. So it's that process of always learning, always discovering that keeps me going as an artist. This piece is called Salt Mountain Still Life. I use the Neptune sculpture that we have right on site at Snow Harbor as the model for it. Oftentimes it was used in salt cellars on the table of kings because salt was so valuable. And this is the salt spoon. Now, of course, it's a totally different experience. Salt is so readily available. And with all the new technologies in terms of the veins and being able to find salt, that we use it to throw on our roads. When I was in an Indian philosophy class in college, I remember, and you know, you don't remember too much from college, but I do remember the idea that no matter how many times you pass a place, that it's always new and it's always different because you are not the same person who are experiencing it, even though you've gone the same way. And it's that approach to life that makes me feel like that's what I do as an artist. This is a little piece here 
that is called Poppin' Fresh. And instead of um, America Bakes Cookies, America's baking a lot of pills there. One of my teachers said, he said, we're the luckiest people in the world because we get to do what we love to do. Thanks for watching my segment of Art or Something Like It. If you'd like to learn more about my work, please visit my website, amcdonald.com. That's our Robbins. He's the craziest glass freak of them all. I'm going to show you why they call me the Coney Island Glass Eater. It's a very simple act. It involves just basically taking this light bulb, biting into it, and chow down on the broken glass. The light bulb is real. Oh, it's, it's warm, which is great, because there's nothing like a hot meal. Hot meal! It's just like comedy. I am Todd Robbins. I am a uh, sideshow guy. <coughs> Refreshing. And I do all kinds of strange things. I'm the chairman of the board out in Coney Island, of Coney Island, USA, and had my own show, Carnival Knowledge, uh, off Broadway, and uh, I'm part of a documentary called American Carney. And it's all about the sideshow twisted, strange, unusual things. Things that your mother said you should never do. You can see that it's just your average 60 watt bulb. I usually 100 watt bulbs, but I'm on a diet. I grew up in Southern California. It was a clean, safe, quiet, suburban community. It was boring. It was not an exciting place to grow up because it persistently insisted that this was not a way of life, it was the way of life. And I, I wanted something more. I wanted to experience real magic. And the magic shop opened in our neighborhood when I was about 10 years old. It was all tricks. It was all deception underneath it all. And I wanted to experience real magic. I wanted to experience something that was extraordinary. And a sideshow came to our neighborhood when I was about 12 years old as part of a carnival. It was there on the midway between the uh, games you couldn't win and the rides that had been approved by bribe safety inspectors. It was great because I went in to see the master of magic, but it wasn't the magic show that captured my imagination that day. It was the guy swallowing swords, the guy eating fire, the guy walking over broken bottles and bare feet. Uh, these are the acts that were based upon extraordinary uh, physical ability beyond the capabilities of the average person. And that's a pretty good definition of real magic. It turned out that some of the old guys used to hang out at the magic shop and work sideshows. And uh, I made their lives living hell as only a teenage boy can uh, until they agreed to teach me how to eat fire and hammer nails into my nose. Here goes. I'm going to do this. You know, it's funny. When you see a magician do his tricks, if he's good, he makes you think what you're seeing is real. Now, I'm not sure he's 100% real, but you're going to think it's a trick because you can't eat glass. Everyone knows you can't eat glass. It's impossible. You can't eat glass, folks. It just goes to show that, that, that common knowledge is often a bunch of bunk. There is a way of doing this. There's a way of chewing it up and swallowing it so it doesn't cut the mouth and throat. And there's a diet and regimen that I go through every day that keeps it moving through my system. Because of what I know, believe it or not, I've eaten somewhere between three and 4,000 light bulbs during the course of my career. I've been approached by uh, a number of people that want me to write a sideshow book on how to swallow swords and how to hammer nails on your nose. And you can't learn it from a book. You can't even learn it from a video. You need someone standing there going, no, move your head a little this way, a little more this, make sure the angle is right, because if you do it wrong, you kill yourself. There's very little margin for error when it comes to shoving swords down your throat. Three times more dangerous than your average sword swallowing feet. But for art, or something like it, anything, anything. Here goes. It's three times more dangerous than a regular thing. Very dangerous. And I'm doing this for you folks. I hope you like it. Because I've seen this before. And I'm sick of it. But for you folks, anything. Oh, look, my fever's gone down. So the idea came up of starting a sideshow school out in Coney Island, uh, which we call the Coney Island Sideshow School. 
What a coincidence. We do classes twice a year, uh, in the fall, right after our season of the sideshow is over, and in the spring, right before our season starts up out in Coney Island. The, the classes are small, there's only about usually six to ten people uh, in it, and I'm the dean, and we have a couple other people that help out uh, and do some of the instruction. Uh, for the most part, I teach how to do these skills and also give people a little background in, of the heritage and the history of it. You ready? You ready? Mm. Oh, look, 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 uh, stuffing. I love stuffing. Tastes like chicken. You know, there's always one thing that makes it all worthwhile. That's a look on the people's faces as they're watching this. It makes the whole ordeal worth doing because this is the chewing up of the glass and the swallowing. That's the easy part of the stunts. It's what's coming up a couple of days from now that I'm not looking forward to. I'm now going to do the most dangerous part of the stunt. I'm going to swallow all the glass. And the reason the most dangerous part, because all this broken glass they washed down with New York City water. Here it goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it when glass repeats on me. All gone. <laughs> I feel so much better after that light snack. <laughs> light snack, it's just like comedy. Being on the show has been more than just a pleasure and an honor. It's, it's, it's been a contractual obligation, and I mean that. Uh, and I want to thank you for, for watching this. Uh, and if you'd like to know more about what I do, go to toddrobbins.com, T-O-D-D-R-O-B-B-I-N-S. And uh, I'll see you down the road. I'm a failure. Life sucks. I hate art. Shuffles and sighs She casts out a line Between the dead